Alright guys, welcome back to the fourth part of the Skyrim tutorial series. This time we will create a noclip hack which will give us the ability to roam the world freely and uh, basically let us walking in the air. There are a few points we need to achieve to get the fly hack working. First we need to find our player's writable coordinates, uh, then we need to create a hook there so we will be able to manipulate the coordinates which control our actual position and then we will write the fly hack itself which will manipulate the coordinates and taking our current rotation into account also. In Skyrim there are two other points which uh, we need to keep in mind. The first one is that the game doesn't really care how long you will be in the air so after I think five seconds uh, if you touch the ground, the game will just toggle the death animation and uh, you will die anyway. So it doesn't really matter if you're 5 seconds in the air or 10 minutes, you die as soon as you hit the ground. So we need to toggle the god mode before we are able to land again. And the second part is we need to get control of the gravity because a fly hack really sucks if the gravity is always dragging you down and you probably can't really get the height or the exit coordinates uh, you want to fly to. So these are two optional but necessary other steps we also have to keep in mind which we we'll, we do later on when the fly hack is working. Okay, let's start to find our writable coordinates. I'm back at the famous stairs and uh, yeah, we continue to run up and down the stairs and increase, decrease our position. So we pick float and we pick an unknown initial value. We run downstairs, downstairs, decrease, increase, 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 increase. And we are left with uh, around 700 results. This is perfect. Then we select every entry, which is uh, non-static, so a black address, and uh, add it to our list. What we do now is we start to uh, freeze like uh, half of the entries and see if we can still jump. If we can still jump, you unfreeze them and delete them right away. And uh, yeah, go on until you find the address which is responsible for our actual position and which we will uh, be able to write. So um, let's just start here and uh, let's freeze them. Can we jump? Yes, we can. Unfreeze and delete from here. Like uh, freeze. Ah, okay. That looks pretty good. You see? Just to uh, show you this again, I'm uh, basically, I'm not in the air, but um, right now I'm in the air and I can't really jump anymore. So what we're going to do is uh, we unfreeze them and uh, we delete everything which is not in the selection from before. Now I lost the bottom ones, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's the same. We are good to go. Just delete the rest. Okay. So it must be one of these. Delete the rest. Freeze. And like you can see, I'm in the air and can't really go down so it must be one of these this can go yeah half can go nope it's not those
yeah, like you can see, it's this one, and uh, I can't really jump anymore. So this is the address we are looking for. What you're going to do now is um, you right click and you see what writes to this address. In this case, three addresses will pop up. I can tell you from my experience that uh, this is the correct one. Uh, the normal way would be to uh, hook all of these one by one and uh, see what kind of different result you're achieving. So right now um, you click this one, go to the disassembler and uh, we see ESI plus E0 in this case is our Z coordinate responsible for our height and um, we want to get access to the ESI. So we need to hook here. And um, what you can do right now is looking for a good location. Uh, I always tend to choose a location which is uh, a little down below over here because um, it can execute the regular code, but then we are uh, just hijacking ESI and uh, providing our own rotation and coordinates and uh, it works pretty well. So what I'm going to do is um, I want to create a signature for this line because um, we need five for the jump. It's one, two, three, four, six in this case. Um, if we hook these two lines and uh, this is perfect. So we start our trusted debugger again, then we are attaching Skyrim, press F9 to run again. And then we are opening the location. So double click here, Control G, it's a D8CAC, and uh, Let's create a signature for these two lines. We need this one, scan. In this case, two references. This isn't perfect. That's why we expand the signature creation. We just want one reference. This is perfect. And uh, so we pick this one and we scroll to the bottom copy this one. This is no clip. This D word is here, find pattern. And it is back and we will just replace this one, this one. This one doesn't exist right now, but it will be later. So no clip. And we will just call it no clip jump back. We can create this one in the hooks and reclass header. D word. So this is the location we will jump back once the hook is finished and we want to continue the regular code flow. The no clip hook will be created in a second not, and now we can just take the freshly created signature into this one. And don't forget the mask, really important. So we can detach this one and the game won't close. Perfect. Okay, let's write the no clip hook real quick. Like this one, um, we would just make a copy of this existing hook and we can delete all of the middle part. We call this no clip. This ones have to go. And if we have a look, this is the first line we need to execute in here. And this is the second line. As always, don't forget, this is an hex, so you have to add the zero x 
to get it working. These are the two lines and um, pop ad push. This will be the the no clip jump back, which we declared here. Uh, size of six is also correct. And in this case, we are not interested in the EDX, but we are interested in the ESI. And um, that's what we are grabbing. Um, you can please create a new D word over here. Uh, we will use this one for the fly hack also. Uh, let's call it Z, um, Z axis. And uh, one more, we call it uh, Z axis pointer. All right. Oops, D word, of course. And uh, what we're going to do now is uh, we write um, into this DXS pointer. That's it. We're just grabbing ESI, moving ESI into a Z-axis pointer. And um, later on in the fly hack, we will just access uh, the Z-axis pointer and uh, we are able to manipulate this. All right, um, we can compile here and our hook should be executed. This should be right and if we done everything the correct way, nothing should happen. We shouldn't crash. And uh, let's see. That looks good. Perfect. Okay, time to write the actual fly hack. We go back in the code. And what I want you to do, please, is uh, to create a new D word. Let's call this few metrics and uh, pick the few metrics from the ESP we created earlier. It makes more sense like this. So we cut this here. We call it few metrics and uh, we just replace this one here because we will use the D word few metrics more often. And also let's create uh, some new floats. Float uh, rel x, rel y, relative z, and new x, new y, new z. I will explain them in a second. So now we can add a new option. Let's call this uh, no clip. And we added the related option block. This is the no clip. On will be um, a new Boolean, which we'll create in a second. Uh, let's call this no clip is true. And over there, no clip is false, of course. All right, this one goes here, and the new boolean, the no clip, is false in default. Then we can create. Ah, uh, let's let's place this underneath. Let's play that here. If no clip. And the no clip code goes here. When I think about it, uh, let's rename the Z axis to just axis, please, in this case, because we are also uh, assigning other axis to it and it just wouldn't be a bad name. Also, keep in mind, please, that the ESI plus E0, uh, which we access in here, is not the Z axis, even though we, we found the line through. Uh, would writes to the Z axis because we are dealing with a XM0 register, which is a floating point register. And uh, this one is holding all of our values for us, the, the X, Y, and Z axis. 
and um, this one is trashable. It means the values are not preserved and you can't rely on the value still there after any function call. So uh, E4 will be the y-axis and E8 is in this case the z-axis. Okay, so we start with uh, assigning the x-axis to axis in this case. So that axis pointer plus E0. This is the z-axis will be assigned to axis. And um, in the fly hack, if we press space, we want to fly up directly in the air and we are navigating by pressing the arrow keys. So let's do the flying up in the air first, um, which would be uh, if get a sync key state. Um, the space key and when we press this one we will manipulate the axis which is right now the the z axis oh made a mistake here because we want to access the z so this would be correct in this case and we want to add like let's say for float and this is this is basically the magnitude which uh, will you which decides if you fly fast or not and uh, the higher the value here the faster you fly so this is this one now we will we need to assign uh, zero flow to the relative position this is uh, rel x is 0, 0, uh, 0, and this is also the y, and this is that. Now we are going to write some code for uh, forward and backward flying and the left and right, which will be uh, if get as in key state, in this case, we have the up arrow and in this case the relative that will be increased by let's say two we can copy this one this is the down key and we say relative that gets decreased and now we got the the left and the right and in this case we have a negative in here no this must be a positive and this is negative. This should be correct. This is the z and this is also z. So, so we don't mix this up. This is fly uh, left, right, hard to write, forward, backward. Okay, so we have new x new y and the new z. So basically uh, new x, y, z are the relative positions um, what gets added to our old position. And uh, we can't just add the movement vector to our current position directly um, because that wouldn't take into account the direction we are actually looking right now. Uh, that's why we need to multiply the relative movement uh, with a rotation vector. And uh, in this case, um, we also have the magnitude, which will drag us in the direction we are facing, if you want to say so. Um, the code for this is also 
relatively easy and um, in this case we have the float float this one this is the few matrix multiplied in this case rel x plus float the few matrix plus 10 rel y plus oops no oh, you have to open this one here and this is here so we close this one here and we have this here now we can this one have to go here and one I have to close here all right this is this line and um, I will give you something very interesting in a second which I want you to notice uh, this is 24 this must be 28 this is 14 this is 18 in this case and here we got the plus four and plus eight. So, <coughs> um, Rake made a really good post about the world to screen matrices. And uh, if you have a look at the OpenGL one. OpenGL is most of the time column based. So it goes like this is one or zero, one, two, three, five, four, uh, four, five, six, seven, and so on. Then we got the DirectX version, which goes row based from left to right. So zero, one, two, four, five, six. And um, in, uh, in Freelancer, which is also a DirectX game where I use the exact the same fly hack also, um, I've wrote this code, which goes from left to right, like it should be, like also the uh, the water screen goes. And uh, what I want you to notice, this is um, in Skyrim or the creation engine at all, basically, um, you see that it's rather OpenGL style. It goes uh, column based. It goes from, uh, from over here to uh, 10, 14, 80, and, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, so that means you can't rely on a game and say, oh, this is DirectX, uh, the few metrics or the Walter screen always have to be row-based or column-based. It can be the other way around. And um, it took me some hours uh, in Skyrim to notice this one. And uh, I actually found this out when I was experimenting with the values. And um, then it went boom and worked. And I was like, wow, this isn't even row based. And um, well, yeah, it's working like this. But um, to show you what's actually happening, what we are doing here is um, we are grabbing the rotation matrix from the few matrix. So if I have a look at, uh, at our current few matrix and I will 
display this best in Sheet Engine. Okay, let's go to our current Frio matrix. It's this one, it will start here. Uh, let's pick like this. This is the few matrix and our rotation matrix, which means the X, Y, Z axis and our current body rotation, uh, the, pick, the pitch, the yaw and the roll, if you want to say so. Um, what we're going to do is we pick these nine numbers. So it's this, 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 the second line and the third line. These numbers on the right and the bottom row are completely uninteresting for us and for the rotation. So these nine numbers is what we pick. And uh, like I told you, in this case, we are, um, uh, uh, we are need to scroll down here a little bit. In this case, we are, we are looking basically down and uh, the the X is uh, this one, this one, and this one. So the the zero, which is the the ten in the end. Then we have plus ten, which is this value and this value, and uh, this is the Y and this is the Z. Okay, this was a little bit theory. Let's finish the actual no clip code. Let's add the X and Y axis code. Um, this is axis is uh, Z axis pointer plus E zero plus E zero. Yes. So this is the X axis. Um, this is this is float and this is axis plus, well, let's say in this case it is new x. So this is the x axis code. What we're going to do now is just increasing the axis. So we can say axis plus plus four. So axis is basically E4 right now. And now we can just paste this one in here. Oh, not this one. And say this is, this is the Y. So now excess is Z and this is uh, E8 and this is the Z coordinate. And we also can add a small sleep at the end. And this is basically it. Now we just need to add the left one, of course, forgot this one. And um, we also need to add brackets over here, which I forgot. Always, of course. This one is good. And All right, this should be it, I think. Let's compile this in here and let's give it a quick try. This is the first part of the flyhack tutorial. It was a, bit, a little bit longer than I expected. And um, now we are just left with uh, editing the gravity. So we are not always get dragged down and we need to uh, toggle the God mode 
so we are able to land again and don't die when we are trying to toggle the no clip off but let's give it a first a little try here uh, when we inject this one toggle on the no clip and press space you see we are directly in the air but we are also falling very fast and if I'm using the arrow keys I'm actually able to move with the arrow keys but I just see left and right is inverted okay um, yeah this is something we can fix really quick uh, so this would be the left actually and this is the right and yeah hope to see you in part two of the no clip tutorial and uh, stay tuned.